Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is you're watching this video. Uh, thank you for coming to my uh, art project here. This is Walter Doodle's art, and I sure hope you enjoy uh, what I'm going to show you today. Um, as you can see, this is a blue heron, and there will be some rocks and a little waterfall, some uh, cherry blossoms and a sun. Uh, this is a traditional Sumi ink and Chinese watercolor that I'm using. I'm also using a traditional Chinese Sumi paint brushes, real inexpensive ones because I'm actually going to be teaching a class and my professional Sumi brushes just we don't have the money for that. So it's uh, back to the cheaper brushes that I'm using here. Uh, one of the brushes I'm using, uh, the one right now that you see, is actually made out of goat hair, and it's a smaller brush. Uh, there will also be a horse hair brush and then a combination brush, a composite between goat and horse hair, and it's for fine detail work. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and try a new program. This is iMovie uh, version 9. Uh, it did not exist on my MacBook, and that was really interesting when I found that out. And I've been looking for uh, a version of this that I could upload to my, or download to my MacBook, and then start using it. I've always wanted to use iMovie, and I'm having to learn a lot. But all I could find was that my OS would only go up to version 9, which is actually not a bad thing because there was a lot of enhancements that were taken off when they upgraded iMovie. But I could only find upgrade programs, upgrade packages, not the actual program itself. And so I had to learn how to hack my own computer using terminal and basically turning the upgrade program into a zip file and rename it and all that. And uh, using the zip file, then create a program uh, from the upgrade. Normally, it won't even install on here, but you can always change these things around. And I did some research and a lot of work, and I figured out how to actually install it as the program. So this is being edited with iMovie 9 for my MacBook Pro. Um, someday I will upgrade my MacBook itself, and uh, but I don't know if I ever want to upgrade away from iMovie 9. They did take away a lot of the features that uh, this has, and this seems to be a really nice program for making these movies. One of the things I liked is I could speed it up with ease. Uh, this is an over an hour painting, and I've been able to condense it down to about 10 minutes. I was able to take out the audio with all the background noises and stuff. It was recorded with my Canon Rebel T6, which I'm going to get away from someday when I can afford to get other uh, video equipment for that. The T6 is really a photograph camera, but that's all right. I, it does fine for the movies. I just need to learn how to uh, keep it down where the resolution is more of the rumble and YouTube resolutions. My Canon really can take some high uh, resolution pictures, and I'm still learning how to control that in the movie function as well. One of the things I really have enjoyed during this whole process is I'm learning as I go along. And um, that is something that I don't ever want to stop. I, I love learning new things, so I learned how to get this program functioning on uh, my can or on my MacBook. Uh, I've learned how to use my Rebel, and uh, I've learned how to reduce the resolution of things so that it is compatible. And that's kind of nice because the first time I did these. Uh, videos when I uploaded them they took hours um, when I just compiled the clips together it took about six hours this one took about 40 minutes and it's a bigger file so I'm enjoying this process now um, 
You can see I have a cast on my hand. Uh, this has been an interesting time for me. And uh, it's sub-zero weather for the most part, especially at night right now. And that's not very convenient because I can't get a coat on over my hand very easily. So, And I can't zip it up or anything like that at all. So I'm kind of stuck. Uh, just being a little cold, staying indoors, healing up. I had surgery. Um, part of the arthritis that I go through ate away one of my bones, and it just kind of turned it into a sponge. So I had to have that removed, surgically removed. Uh, as I'm recording this, uh, the next day, tomorrow, uh, I will be going in for post-op. Hopefully we get a better cast on my hand. This one is really an irritating uh, thing to go through. I do enjoy this type of painting, but I am going to come to an end on this type of painting for a while. I'm going to get back to it, but one of the things I want to do in some upcoming videos is to do reviews of fountain pens. That's one of my passions. I don't use ballpoint pens uh, whenever possible. Um, I will turn a ballpoint pen down in favor of a fountain pen. Uh, I have one particular fountain pen, I haven't used it yet, that I am looking forward to reviewing. I have several fountain pens I've used a lot of, but I will go ahead and do reviews. I don't just write with fountain pens, I also do art with them. They're more of a doodling style of art, zen tangles, things like that. I'm looking forward to that. So that is what's coming up real soon in the future for you. In fact, my next video will be reviewing a particular fountain pen, a very interesting one. And uh, anyway, I'm not sure what else to say about this. Um, let me talk about these supplies for a bit. Uh, you notice the brown that's on the limb that I painted there. Very subdued. These are considered traditional Chinese watercolor, and they're put out by Marie's. Um, I don't know how much longer I will be using these watercolors. I have a, a real liking for some other types of watercolors. The ones I really like I get from uh, Jerry's Artorama. They're Soho, inexpensive in comparison to other brands, and yet really vibrant colors. The problem I have with the Marie's is not the vibrancy so much, although they are a little more subdued in the color, but that also is the, a, a Chinese um, style. But so, some things like the browns, you just have to rub and rub and rub with a lot of water to get them to have really any color at all. And you can see right there, it, it, it's just subdued browns. Uh, it worked okay for this painting because I wasn't really going to put color all over the place. I was going to put color here and there, but I really wanted a more rich brown, especially on the limb. And I just wasn't getting there, and I was getting frustrated with that. So I just kind of took that off and decided I'm going to go with what I have. Here you can see I'm using a little bit of that brown. I'm trying to make the reflections of the rocks into the water and it's okay it worked out all right uh, overall i do like this painting i like it a lot uh one of the things i did this is uh you know uh, bob ross always said there are no uh, mistakes just happy little accidents i dropped some grayish water up at the top left there and had to wipe it away and then what do you do because it's still going to show on the paper so i went ahead and i added this sun kind of in the traditional Chinese style. So whenever you do make a mistake, drop a little water here or there or whatever it is, there is always a way around it. And in this case, it happened really nice because when I put my ink stamp on it, then I had my three red objects that were in a really uh, not in line with each other. They were in a different way. Uh, a kind of an unequal triangle. Here I'm signing it in Elian script. I am almost done. That says Blue Heron, and then I sign it with Walter in Elian script. And then after that, you will see me do the red stamp. So this is Blue Heron, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, sure thank you for watching it. God bless, and I love you.
Bye.